And last but not least, traders, last but not least, you don't own any Bitcoin. You know I had to put it in there. You know I had to put it in there, guys. I can't give you financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, guys. I'm not. I'm just a trader. All right. That's all I am. I've been trading the financial markets for 40 years. Um, and I will trade until the day I die. But I can't give you financial advice. But if I were allowed to give you some advice, I'd say you got to be involved in Bitcoin. We are in the an era of dematerialization. Do you realize what that is? We're in the era of dematerialization. You don't know what that word means? Look it up. Everything is being dematerialized around us. Look at what happened to the mail. All right. Remember when we used to write letters? You've heard me say this. Lick this, lick the leather, and it, yucky glue and put the proper stamps on the letter and we walk it to the mailbox and mail the letter. What do we have now? Mail has been dematerialized. It's freaking email now. Is email bigger than the old way of mailing? Of course it is. Are there more emails that go out than actual letters that go out in the actual mail? Of course, it's exponentially bigger. The dematerialized form is always becomes bigger than the material form. Look at what happened to music. Remember when you used to go buy a, an eight? I know I'm dating myself. I had eight track tapes, these fat tapes that look like this. This was one song. It looked just like this, an eight track tape. Did anybody remember eight track tapes? Most of you weren't born then, I know. But I used to have an eight track tape. It was about the size of this. It was a one song. You put this in a big giant eight track player. And if you were a music buff, you had like hundreds of these. Then the eight track went to a cassette tape, which was about the size of this, right? Maybe smaller. Then the cassette tape went to an MP3 file. Remember that? Remember MP3 files? And now what, what where, where is music? Show, show, it, show me music. It's streamed, right? Demi music has been dematerialized. You can't touch it. You can't feel it anymore. You just stream it. And is there more music streamed than there ever was on eight track tapes? Absolutely. Exponentially more. More music is streamed than cassette tapes. There's more music streamed in an hour than has ever been put on a cassette tape. The dematerialization of music made music global. The dematerialization of mail gave people the ability to mail and communicate globally. Dematerialization. We're in the era of dematerialization. Do you understand? Look at what happened to movies. Remember VHSs? Remember when you had to take the movie you went to Blockbuster if you were in America. Remember that? You went to Blockbuster. You rushed there on Friday because they only have 25 of the videos of the top video out. And you had to get there early. <laughs> you went home with these cassette tapes, right? Remember? And you, 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 you opened it up and you could look at the movie and you put it in a VCH player. The f show me a movie today. I want to feel it. I want to touch it. You can't. You can't touch a movie. 
You can touch your television screen, but that's the television screen. You can't touch the movie today. There's no movie that you can put in your hands today. Movies have been dematerialized. Do you understand? Is, are there more movies today than ever before when there were cassettes, VHSs? Of course, the dematerialized form always becomes way bigger. So we're in this era where analog is being converted to digital. Remember the phone, the analog phone with the cord on it. They used to hang on the wall. Somebody used to call you, you'd be like, what the, who's calling me? You grab the phone off the wall and you fought with the cord. The cord always got tangled and you have to undo the cord. Remember that? Undo the cord. Hello, mom. Now, what's the phone? What's the value of the analog phone on the wall with the look it up for me? I want somebody to do that right now. Let's let, let me do it right now. Let me see. I'm going to go right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look up on Amazon, right? Let me look up on Amazon what a freaking analog phone is worth today. Let's see. What is an analog phone? We're analog phone for home. Let's do that. What does this thing say? Let's see here. What does it say? The heck does it say here? No, 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 no. Want that? Can I do this? Why is it not letting me do it? There it is. Okay. So look, 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 uh, 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 boom. So forty one dollars. <laughs> look at this. That's the one. This is the one for the wall, right? Oh, wow. We're really, hmm, that's fancy. The wall version is very fancy. $41.50. If you don't want the wall version, you get this for the, the very, very affordable price of $40. Now, let's search the digital version. Oh, well, you know. Shoot, an iPhone case is more than that. <laughs> you get the point, guys. You understand what I'm saying. The point is, this digital version is like $1,500. The analog version is $40. My point is, is that the digital version of something is always going to become bigger and more valuable than the non-digital version. We see this in our pictures. Remember when you had to um, buy film at the, at the store and put specific film in your camera? Then you had to go, you took the pictures, then you had to go develop the pictures. Then you put the pictures in albums and you bored people that came over when you pulled out your albums to show people your pictures of your picnics and your, your Christmases. And when your kids were little, you bored the hell out of people when they came over with your albums. What do you do now? Pictures have been dematerialized, right? You've got more pictures on your phone than you ever in your life would have had in albums. The digital version of something is always bigger and more valuable. So what's my point? If everything has been digitized, dematerialized, why not freaking money? Isn't it time for money to be dematerialized? Yes. Bitcoin. Isn't it time for money? One universal item 
to become globally available to 8 billion people on a cell phone. What's more valuable to you, your photos or your money? Bitcoin. Bitcoin is also property. It's not just money. And this is what got me, guys. This is what won me over. When I realized this is digital property, for the first time in the human existence, 8 billion people can become property owners with a phone. Oh my God. I can buy a beachfront house in Malibu, California, but I can't put it on my back and take it with me to Italy. If I want to move, I can't move that piece of property. But I can move my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin is with me. My property, my digital property is with me at all times. Do you understand how revolutionary this is when you understand it as property? This property has an annualized growth rate of 230% a year. I know that they're not, it doesn't go up every year, but on average it goes up 230% a year. And it's only 12 years old. And it is eating the world. It's the fastest adopted technology ever known to the human race. The internet was adopted, traders. The internet was adopted at the rate of 60% a year. It was the fastest growing technology ever known to mankind. It was adopted in the shortest period of time by virtually every human being on the planet, the internet. Nothing had ever been adopted faster than the internet, which was, by the way, called up a fad all the way up to the year 2000. Internet's a fad. Internet's a fad. It's going to go away one day. Until Bitcoin came on the scene. The internet was adopted at the rate of 60% a year. Bitcoin is adopted at 120% a year. There's 3 million new Bitcoiners every single week. 3 million a week. Do you understand? This is going to take over the world. And it is going to bring fair property rights to 8 billion people on planet Earth. The first time in the history of the world, it is going to bring back price discovery of all other financial markets. When people start selling stocks that have been going up for the past 12 years without a major collapse, when people start pulling money out of the equity markets, where is it going to go? Cash that's earning zero? Really? You think so? No, a portion of that's going into Bitcoin. When real estate, which has had the best year in 16 years, when people start to take some money out of the real estate market, where do you think it's going to go? A portion is going to find its way into Bitcoin. All you got to do is wait. Bond markets, bonds are yielding 1%. When these bonds come due, you think they're going to go into new bonds? No. The equity market that's been up 12 years in a row? No, that's already up too much. No, a portion is going to go into Bitcoin. Now, let me just say this. If Bitcoin is the digital version of gold, and it is, in a way. And gold's value is 10 trillion. Where should Bitcoin's value at currently 700 billion, where, should it, where is it gonna go? Is the value 
does did the value of my iPhone go down to the value of the analog version that I showed you on Amazon? No. The digital version is always higher. So if the digital version of gold is Bitcoin, the dematerialization of gold is Bitcoin and gold's current value is 10 trillion, then Bitcoin's future value must be exponentially higher than 10 trillion because every digital version goes way past the analog version. And so, yes, I believe that we all have a very unique opportunity to plug ourselves into one of the, the fastest growing technology that's ever been created. And I'm willing to bet that this technology will rise in value for the rest of our lives. That's right, decade after decade after decade. And a lot of people say, well, Oliver, how can that be? How can you say something like that? And isn't Bitcoin down off the high? How can you say it's going to go up forever? How? And I say, well, allow me to retort. <laughs> Vocabulary word. Let me respond. How long has Amazon been going up? How long? Amazon's been going up for 42 years. No, I'm sorry. Amazon's been going up for 24 years. 24 years, that's two decades, and it's still going up. Bitcoin's 12 years old. Apple's been going up for 44 years, 42 years. Microsoft's been going up 44 years. The stock market's been going up for how many decades? From 1933? The bond market's been going up for 300 years. Gold has been going up for 6,000 years. 6,000 years gold has been going up in price ever so gradually. Bitcoin's 12 years old. I believe it's going to go up forever. As long as you're, it's, as long as your life is going to last, it's going to go up in my opinion. So while I can't give you financial advice, all I can do is tell you what I'm banking on. And I am telling you, I have been banking on Bitcoin from the price of 3,800 and I bank on it every single day. There's not a single day that I do not put something in to Bitcoin. If I don't need it, I invest it there. I make my daily living from the markets. I live off of 10% of that and 90% goes there. All right. That's my bet for the future. And I believe I've got the right bet. All right. And don't let guys, The price we have to pay, right? The price we pay for having the fastest growing asset in the world, the price we pay, all right? So I want to make sure I've got this right, right? The price we pay is volatility, all right? People get spooked because Bitcoin does that. But it's the price you pay to get this. Do you understand? So everyone focuses on the little, the smallest part of the equation. This is the, the downward is the smallest part. The upward is the biggest part. But everyone focuses on the little part. I don't get that. Bitcoin doesn't crash downward. It crashes upward. 
it just steps downward. So, okay, Bitcoin has the possibility of declining 70% from the high. But when it has this leg, it goes up 300%. 600%, a thousand percent. So the up legs are always bigger than the down one. But why is it that everyone focuses on the little piece and not the big pieces that it does? You've got to be able to put your big boy pants on if you're going to play play if you're going to play in the big leagues here with the fastest growing asset ever known to mankind, you're going to have to put your big boy and big girl pants on. You're going to have to stomach these every now and then. And that's the price you pay for these kinds of gains. Now, if you can't handle this, then you're going to be stuck with things that do this that go up 6% a year, all right? And you have your little two to 3% declines, all right? So these are your declines and these are, this is your gains. But if you want 300 to 1,000% gains, You're going to have to suffer, deal with, the, with that. So what? Let's use this. Let's go in when these happen so that we prepare ourselves to benefit when this happens. All right.